Um, okay, John, so this is one of my very favorite books. So this is The Boy, the Mole, the Fox, and the Horse. Okay, there's a good little parable here. Um, you and Cole might enjoy yes, it, right? Yes, absolutely. Good read, but I think um, I would recommend this to all adults, too, because I think there's some good lessons in there for, for all of us. So this is a thank you for you for the, for the first year. Um, let, me, let me sign up really quick. Thanks for all your great work. It's uh, been an honor. So excited for been fun, right? Excited for year two. You you can you can make change, work hard, and have fun all at the same time. Amen. So enjoy this. Thank right? you. Right, Amy. My I appreciate you get a kick yeah, out of too. Thank you so much. Well, so so here we are. I'm here with my friend, Dr. John Bartlow, and um, this is a treat. This is Gorilla Talks. Three. Um, so, it, what a pleasure to have you join yeah. us and, and learn a little Excited bit about. Here. Are you in a new role? Like John, tell us. Remind us where you're. Yes. From. Yeah, I, I am in a new role. I'm excited. So, uh, associate vice president, dean of students. Wow. And uh, it's awesome. It's awesome. It's been the, the busiest summer of my life. Imagine that. Yeah. Uh, well, you were with me on the bike trip. I, I was. And then you went on your own. We went on our, our two-week Great Gorilla Tour, and uh, somewhere midway through that tour, I transitioned into the new role from alumni director to the role right. uh, working in student affairs. So very excited to be working with our students again. You know, it's kind of a it's kind of a full circle, Dan, because I started out. My first job was working in admission, recruiting students to Pittsburgh State. Well, wait, go back even further. Oh, radio. So, no, oh, it started no. as a gorilla, as a oh, student. Absolutely, right. yes, yeah, Which of is, course. I mean, people may not yeah. know about you. This is personal. Right? Absolutely. Uh, 29 years ago this month. Everybody do the math at home. 29 years okay. ago this Carry month. Carry one, divide by two. Okay. All right. I set foot on this campus as a freshman. Wow. So it's hard to believe, hard to believe. That but. Time has gone by quickly, but uh, what does it feel like? Though? What is it so for me? Like, <laughs> I just came from an institution where I was a, a graduate mm -hmm. uh, student, graduate, okay, um, and in a state that was personal to me, so right. it was fun to go back and kind of do good for that mm -hmm. community. What does it feel like as a student who, if you would have asked young John Barthow when you were here as a student, what are you going to do with your career? Yeah. To have the chance to come back full circle, not only work with alumni, but work with our students. How cool is that? I, if you would have asked John Barlow 29 years ago, <clears throat> I don't think I would have had any idea. I started out as a biology maker. Okay. So I love plants. What are you going to do? Yeah. I, I wanted to be a botanist. Okay. Uh, I love plants. I, I had a dream of, of owning a nursery <clears throat> or a greenhouse. Okay. And, um, and I still love plants. Yeah. I, I truly do. Uh, but when I, got into the, the coursework and, and I realized a lot of it was, you know, looking through microscopes and, and, and things like that. That really wasn't, I'm more of an active guy. I want to be out there doing it. With people. With, right. Exactly, yeah, with yeah. people. And so I learned after the first year that biology or botany wasn't the route to go for me. And I really, I struggled with what I was going to major in. I, I was very involved in music. I thought about majoring in music, yeah. but then I thought, you know, okay, so I don't know if I want to be a music teacher. I don't know if that's me. So I'll keep doing the music, but I'm not going to focus on that major-wise. And and I still vividly remember I was having a conversation with my mom. Right. And I said, Mom, I'm you know I, I just I don't know what to major in. I don't know what to do. And she said, John, you're great with people and you love to talk. Yeah. Why don't you major in communication? And and so right. I ended up uh, taking some communication courses and I went down a, a broadcasting route. Okay. And I so, could see that. Yeah, yeah, with that broadcasting around, really I wanted to do television. Okay. Um, but I ended up working at the radio station here on campus at KRPS. Started working there when I was 20. Okay. And worked there for three years as a student employee and uh, kind of worked my way up to the point where I was hosting All Things Considered. I was the local All Things Considered host. No way. Yeah, yeah, really? when I was about 22. I love that. And we still had live jazz at that point in time. Okay. So um, I was oh, able wow. to have like a jazz show where I'd like, you know, pick pick albums out of the library and, and, and play, play the, you know, live. It was do all people live. still know what albums are, John? I hope so. I know, I, I, I know I do, but I think I worry about like our little boys <laughs> at home, right? Like if I show them that they're like, it's coming back. Yeah, it I think is. our students know what they are. Finals, yeah. yeah. So broadcasting is what I ended up majoring in in my undergrad. 
thought I was going to go the radio route. Um, actually worked at KRPS one year full time here at Pittsburgh okay. State, and um, just kind of a, a, a change of fate. Uh, there was an opening, a last minute opening in the admission office for okay. a recruiter, and the admission director knew me because I was pretty involved on, yeah. on campus, yeah. and I got a call and said, "Hey, we're." pretty desperate for someone to go out and recruit students. We think you'd be good at it when you consider it. Yeah. And I said, wow, that sounds really great. And really that was the life changer there. The, the, the thing that made me- A real drum, right? Pretty the thing good. that made me realize, wow, higher ed, being around students in this higher ed atmosphere and the meaning behind higher ed, why we do it, yep. was the path that I think I wanted to take. So I was an admission counselor. For a year, I had an opportunity then to go back and, and be a teaching assistant uh, in the communication yeah. department. And wow. so I taught speech comm okay. uh, for about a year and a half uh, as a teaching assistant. Continued to do some part-time work for the admission office. Uh, when I finished my, my master's degree, I, I put my feelers out there and I, just, I was ready to go out and explore the world. And, and so had applications kind of all over the country. Yeah. Really didn't know where I was gonna land, but was just excited to spread my wings and get away. Was, was your wife Amy on the scene? So that yeah, that's yeah. funny how that works. So I finished that summer of 2003. I met Amy that summer of 2003. Okay, all right. Honestly, the first time in my life, I was a pretty, I was pretty serious about relationships. You yeah. know, I was always yeah. kind of, yeah. honestly, I was always kind of like seeking who's going to be my life partner. Yeah. When, when, as a 20 year old, I probably should have been a little more late. Right. Yeah. Had it, but right. So for the first time, I wasn't seeking a life partner. And, and then Amy came came along. Amy. And, um, and I was pretty upfront with her. I said, I like you a lot. You seem like a great person. <laughs> she was 20 at the time. And I said, but I will not be around here. I've got job applications out. And so we've been dating for a month when I went up to Carleton College in Northfield, Minnesota right. to so interview. Carleton, yeah. yeah. And so she went with me. Uh, and we honestly we fell in love with the town, we fell in love with the college, we fell in love with each, each other. other. Rest and, is history. Yeah, and, and I, I got the job. She continued on at Pittsburgh State. Uh, we did long distance for a semester. She transferred up to the University of Minnesota while I was oh, working at okay. in Carleton and we were up there for three years. So that's almost movie worthy, right? <laughs> um, that's amazing. And you know, I think about the feeling, kind of the pride. Of, yeah. I got that from you from, you know, it's been a year getting to know you and your family. But just the pride in this place, right? Yeah. So as, as a graduate, to be able to come back and serve your institution, that, talk to us a little bit about what that feels like. And then when you say dean of students, mm -hmm. what does that really mean? What are you doing? What kind of areas of responsibility yeah. do you have? Yeah, I, I mean, honestly, to be able to come back and serve this place, it's pretty surreal. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, I don't take lightly how incredibly uh, lucky and blessed I am that I've been able to spend the amount of time here at Pitt State that I've been here in a professional capacity and, and still be able to grow. Right. And I think something I told yeah. you when we yeah. first met is I said, you know, look, I, I want to grow, I want to do more, but I'm not willing to give up what I've established the roots that I've grown here in Pittsburgh, Kansas, right. and in this university. It means too much. It does. It yeah. does. You know, and 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 so um, it's uh, it's been an incredible opportunity. I'm incredibly honored. It's great to you know, it's great to have that history. It's great to be able to say, you know, I understand and see how things have changed over the last yeah. 29 years. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, so it gives a great perspective, and. Um, you know, my love for this place, you yeah. know, is, is, is deep, is deep. And, and, you know, even when I was at Carleton, there are, you and I, there are parts, of, parts of, uh, many parts of Pittsburgh state that I, that I missed, but, you know, being able to go to Carleton and, and see another side of things, yeah, it's great I experience. think it, it allowed me to come back with a completely different perspective. And then I think the different roles that I've been lucky enough to hold here have yeah. given me a, a, a broad perspective of, of things on campus. So uh, yeah, it's just an incredible opportunity. I'm, I'm so excited to be able to serve our students yeah. and ensure that they are not only are successful, but, but just ensure that they leave this place and, and come back as alumni just feeling like nothing could have been better. Right, there you go. It was, it yeah. was everything and more that I hoped it could be. Well, we're, as you know, last um, fall and spring, I spent mm -hmm. a lot of time with students, mm -hmm. right? 
And you know, a lot of institutions say, say they're student focused. Right. That's not always the case, right? right? It's nice to put that in the literature. Um, it's another thing to actually do it, right? And, and to have a really engaged, excited, um, dynamic student uh, experience, right? So that's what we're all hoping mm -hmm. for. It's what I heard from students. They want to see that. Um, and so what I know we're really confident about you in this role, John, is bringing all of your experience and talents into that to work with our students to create not just a bigger, smaller version of another institution right. and the types of programs and services they have, but what can we do here that really sets us apart? And I'm confident, um, I speak for the leadership team as a whole, to have somebody like you with your experience and care and commitment to this institution doing that work. So I want to thank you for stepping up into this role. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, what are you looking forward to? Well, you know, I think just helping to, to build on, um, what, something I've thought about a lot is I think we've got to be a culture with our students of, of really kind of a customer service point of view. You know, the, it sounds kind of black and white, but you know, there are clients. Yeah, I mean, we, we work yes. for, we work for them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And and so I think about, you know, when I bartended in college or when I waited tables in college and I think about, you know, the, the customer is yeah. is right. You're there to yeah. and so I, I really want to approach things from this perspective of what can I do, what can the people I work with do to make sure that you have the best experience as possible. And and I know, you know, obviously we're not gonna go do anything that, right. that somebody wants, but I think we have to be more of a culture of, of yes, we can figure out a way to accommodate you yeah. in this in this way. A little improv, right? Yes, they yeah. do, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. absolutely, absolutely. I mean, it's the world isn't black and white. Yeah. And I understand we have to have certain ways that we do things, and, and obviously there has to be rules, but yeah. I also feel like we've got to be flexible. And let's have some fun. Yeah, absolutely. Let's have a bunch of fun. You know, and I appreciate, uh, I wish, uh, Provost Smith was here, right? Howard would say this. He's really good at making the connection between we want our students to learn in the classroom and outside of the classroom. And again, easy to say that, but it really takes, in some ways, there's more art to it mm -hmm. of connecting uh, those experiences for students in meaningful ways. And I think that's some of the really good work that, I mean, there's, I was like, I think we all compete to say who has the best job on campus. Um, but I really think you probably do because to be able to spend as much time as you're going to spend with students, right. there's nothing left, right? So no, absolutely, and uh, you know, it's uh, it's just it's an honor to be in this role and 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 you know help these students uh, uh, learn how to be the best people that they can be. And and you know, you talked about inside the classroom and outside the classroom. I mean, I had amazing experiences inside the classroom at Pitt State, but I also had incredible experiences outside of the classroom. Yeah. And I think those outside experiences turn me into the person that I am today, just every bit as much sure. uh, as, as the, uh, the academic experiences. I mean, the clubs and organizations I was involved yeah. in, the people I got to know. So I think you're totally right, and research bears that out, right? Right. And so we, we know that as practitioners in the field. Well, as we kind of wrap up our, mm -hmm. our quick brief mm -hmm. interview, and I would encourage folks to, to get in touch with John and learn more about what he does and how he's going to really help our students and support them this year. I always ask the kind of off topic, mm -hmm. right? So what, so get ready, right? <laughs> what are you binging right now? What are you watching? Maybe a podcast, <laughs> maybe you, you dove into a Netflix series or mm -hmm. something like what, what, what should we know about that? Maybe we can go back and, and watch in our free time. Does anybody have free time? Mm -hmm. I don't know, but so, my free time tends to be when I'm laying in bed, getting ready to, to go yeah. to sleep. You know, it's kind of like Amy and I are kind of ships passing in the night right. a lot of times. I know you understand yeah, yeah. that. And then we get cold to bed and then we're laying there and, and, and deep breath. And deep like, breath. Right. Okay, let's watch something. The, the latest thing we've been watching is Suits. Suits? <laughs> really? <laughs> suits on Netflix. Okay, so I, <laughs> is it great? Yeah, what's it about? I, it's about lawyers. Okay. It's about lawyers. And so, um, Jamie Brooks is going to love that. I know. Like, she's, she's it's, probably seen it. Before. It's about these high powered uh, lawyers in New York. And, okay. you know, I, I've often looked over at Amy and said, I wonder how real this is. You know, <laughs> right, I, yeah. I talked to Sean and so we need to hear David. But, um, so it's entertaining. Okay. It's, got a good, it's got a good plot. It's entertaining. You know, you've got lots of great personalities. Um, so that's been, that's kind of been our, 
our entertainment lately. The thing that we Fun just wrapped up project. that is very different is we wrapped up uh, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Vanessa loves that. I have not seen it, but she it's absolutely that 50s, 60s vibe. She's a comedian. Uh, of course, I love that kind of okay. retro yeah. vibe, and, and she's funny as heck, and, okay. and the, 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 uh, the acting is great. It just really takes me back to an era when I think it would have been really cool to live. Yeah, right. You know? I just like how people dress. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, John, thank you thank for you, the good man. work that you Appreciate do. Appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. John Bartlow, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go. Come see yeah. me in the student center. Yes. Come see me there.